liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to... I'm Tom Lyons, the STEM Enrichment Lead at STEM Learning. And with my colleague Becca, we're going to be talking to you today about Ezra UK and all the things that you can get involved with. I'm going to give you an introduction to Ezra UK, and then Becca is going to talk to you about our competitions and challenges. So who are Ezra UK? Well, Ezra is the European Space Education Resources Office in the UK. We're here to help schools and colleges and families to use the context of space to inspire and engage young people. So there you can see a screenshot from our website and that you can access at www.stem.org.uk slash Ezero. We're funded by the UK Space Agency and the European Space Agency. This is the Ezero family. So these are all the other Ezero offices across Europe. So you can see we work in collaboration um, we have a central point of ESA education in the Netherlands, uh, but we all work together along with other space agencies and other organisations to bring together resources and um, we provide competitions and challenges as Becca will talk to you about later that you can get involved with. So in terms of our offer, well, we have resources on our website. We have nearly 1000 space context resources on the website that you can access. And um, we've just given a couple of, of primary examples there. Um, and we also do continuing professional development for teachers. So we have face to face courses um, or we will be again in the future. Um, so here you can see a picture from uh, one of our conferences, I think that was from 2019 Space Conference, and teachers there creating mountains out of plasticine, mountains on the moon to look at shadows. We also have a variety of online courses, one of which is featured there is called Teaching Climate Change. That's our newest resource that we've produced, or our newest course that we've produced in partnership with Ezro Island. And that's all about using the context of space and, and satellites to be able to teach climate change. And it links into our climate detectors project, which Becca will talk about later. We also um, work with STEM ambassadors. So we have our One Million Interactions program, which is in, in partnership with the Careers and Enterprise Company to work with um, STEM ambassadors across the UK to go into schools and you can see just a picture there of some STEM ambassadors on a panel that we had um, sitting you can see with our, one of our um, who are honorary STEM ambassadors Tim Peake um, got to chat to the group of teachers that we were with um, so STEM ambassadors can go into the schools um, and do events with children or they can do things online uh, again, you can go to our website and, and see all about the One Million Interactions program. Um, we also have a space education quality mark. So this is to gain recognition for your school. We have bronze, silver and gold. Um, and this is looking at um, all different aspects that you are in, in the way that you're using space in your lessons or in extracurricular activities. Um, and you can do a self evaluation and then it will get um, externally evaluated as well. And that's all free. So um, the only thing that you might have to pay for is the plaque at the end. Um, so again, all the information is on our website for that. So I'm going to pass over to my uh, colleague now, Becca Crawford Richardson, to talk about the Ezra UK competitions and challenges. Thanks very much. Hello everyone, my name is Becca and I work at Ezero UK alongside Tom. So today I'm going to cover the five European Space Agency education challenges and competitions that are all space themed and that we as Ezero UK either run or promote in the UK, encouraging schools, families and communi community groups to all get involved. So the five challenges and competitions I'm going to cover are Mission X, the Moon Camp Challenge, CANSAT, AstroPi and Climate Detectives. So to start with, we've got Mission X. Uh, Mission X is an international educational challenge 
focusing on fitness and nutrition that encourages students to train like an astronaut. Teams of students um, are asked to complete either physical activities or scientific activities to earn points, which they then submit to the Mission X uh, website and each submission helps the Mission X mascots Luna and Leo walk to the moon. So you can see from the bottom image there, Luna and Leo need to walk 384,400 kilometres to reach their destination. It is aimed at ages 8 to 12, but the activities can be adapted for all age groups. Um, the challenge is worldwide, and at the moment we have uh, over 20 countries from across Europe and the rest of the world taking part. It always runs from January um, until the, the start of January until the end of May each year. Um, you can sign up from now, so if you visit the trainlikeanastronaut.org website, um, you'll be able to sign up um, from the UK or from a, any other country. Uh, and you'll be sent out all of the information that you need to launch the challenge um, at the beginning of January. Um, the website has gone through some updates recently. Um, so if you have taken part in previous years, um, it will be a new website that you um, that you go to. Um, we've also got a Facebook page, um, a Facebook group where you can uh, interact with other teams from around the world. And there's also a Twitter page. Um, where if you give that a follow, you'll be able to keep up to date on any uh, news and, and updates. Um, the second challenge is the Moon Camp Challenge. Um, this one asks students to design their own moon settlement using a 3D modeling tool, either Tinkercad or Fusion 360. Um, teams of students first have to develop um, some experiments that would let them explore the extreme environment of space and understand how astronauts can live on the moon. Then they have to design their moon camp, considering the use of local resources and making sure it provides protection and living and working facilities for the astronauts. The moon camp challenge is divided into three um, separate categories, depending um, on different levels of complexity. So Moon Camp Discovery um, is for beginners and Moon Camp Explorers is for those with a bit more of an intermediate level of knowledge in 3D design. And Moon Camp Pioneers is the most advanced level. So in Moon Camp Discovery, teams design only one component of the Moon Camp using Tinkercad. Um, and once they upload that design, they receive a participation certificate. The, this cat category, is aimed at students um, all the way up to 19 year, years old, but it is recommended um, for ages 6 to 14. Uh, and this one runs from September to March. Um, Moon Camp Explorers is aimed at ages up to and including 14 um, and asks students to use Tinkercad um, to complete a, a full Moon Camp. Uh, and they then submit their, their Moon Camp to um, an expert jury. Um, they are competing for the Moon Camp Explorers Prize for Best, best Project, um, which is usually a 3D printer for the school. Um, Moon Camp Pioneers is um, for ages 15 to 19. Um, and for this one, teams are asked to complete their Moon Camp using Fusion 360. Uh, and again, there is a, a prize of a 3D printer um, for the winners. Um, and Moon Camp Explorers and Pioneers both um, run from January to March. To find out more, there is a Moon Camp Challenge website um, here, uh, where there's a wealth of uh, resources um, and information, um, including um, some really useful tutorials on how to use Tinkercad and how to use Fusion 360. There's also some Meet the Experts videos um, which are interviews with um, ESA Moon researchers. And there are a lot of um, past designs um, from each category um, to look at um, for, for inspiration. So I've added a few onto this slide. So they start from the uh, beginner category on the left all the way up to the most complex designs. The next uh, competition is uh, the CANSAT competition. Um, which provides students with the opportunity of having practical experience working on a small scale space project. And this one is aimed at students over the age of 14. So a CANSAT is a simulation of a real satellite that the students build themselves. Um, there are three main challenges for the students. 
Um, the first one is to fit all the major subsystems found in a satellite, including power sensors and communications into the volume and shape of a soft drinks can. Um, the second challenge is to provide a parachute um, to ensure it survives the landing um, as these CANSATs are launched at regional events across the country on small rocket. Um, so they reach about a thousand foot and they need to um, survive the landing. So they need a parachute. And the third challenge is that they need to carry out scientific experiments and transmit in-flight data to an Earth-based computer um, during these launches. Um, so there's a primary mission, um, which is, is set by us, and there is a secondary mission um, where the students come up with something that they want to investigate. Um, after the regional um, launches, we have a um, national final in York, um, and at the moment, the application phase for cancer um, is around, is ending on the uh, 1st of um, October uh, this year. But if there are any schools who've kind of missed this deadline slightly, just get in touch and, and we can chat to you and add you on if you want to be involved. Um, we are running CPD sessions this year, so there's one on the 14th of October and there's one on the 21st of October. The one on the 14th is in York and the one on the 21st is in Stevenage um, for teachers who are new to the, the competition. We've also introduced this year um, mentorship from STEM ambassadors. Uh, so if uh, you have a team that's taking part in cancer and they would like to be paired up with a STEM ambassador from the space industry, then we can we can facilitate that and they'll be able to give them advice on, say, the mechanics or the electronics of the computing or even the project management of the of the whole competition. Um, while the students are building their cancer, they complete um, progress reports and um, that they return to us for judging. Um, and then uh, after the regional launches have taken place, we pick 10 teams to go to um, the national final um, in York. Um, the regional launches are not competitive and we encourage every team um, that's taking part in CANSAT to attend a launch, um, even if their CANSAT's not completely finished, uh, just so that they can get the experience of doing it. Um, and then the winners from the UK competition go can go on to the ESA European final with all of the other winners from across Europe. Um, this year, uh, the, the last competition um, was uh, the the final is happening uh, happened in September, um, and it wasn't face to face because of the the current pandemic. But hopefully next year it'll be. Um, back up and running normally, and the fi European final will be held in the Netherlands. So the next uh, challenge is AstroPi. So AstroPi gives young people um, the chance to run their a computer program in space on a Raspberry Pi computer on board the International Space Station, and it's run in collaboration with the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation. There are um, two levels to this challenge. Um, mission Zero is for beginners and Mission Space Lab is for those who want a bit more of a challenge. So for Mission Zero, students are asked to write a um, simple Python program using free online tools. And as long as it doesn't contain any errors, it is guaranteed to run on the International Space Station. Um, the student's program needs to take a humidity reading on board the International Space Station, and then it needs to communicate to the astronauts with personalised message, which will be displayed for 30 seconds for the astronauts to read. Um, every team taking part will receive a certificate um, that will show the location of the ISS um, above the Earth when their programme was run. Um, and this level is, is suitable for students up to the age of 14. Mission Space Lab is aimed at students up to the age of 19. Um, and they are asked to design an experiment to run on an Astro, an Astro Pi computer on the ISS. So teams whose experiment ideas are accepted will receive an Astro Pi kit to help them run their experiments. And the experiment is first tested on Earth to make sure it's viable. And then the best experiments will be deployed to the ISS and they will run for 
two full orbits of the Earth. Teams will then receive um, their experimental data um, back um, to analyse and write final reports and the best um, 10 reports are selected as the winners. There is a dedicated AstroPi website, which I've just linked to at the bottom of this page. If you want some more information and some resources, um, check that out. So the final challenge that I want to talk about today is climate detectives. So um, this is a project that runs from September to May and it's for students between age, the ages of 8 and 15. Students are challenged to make a difference in understanding and protecting the Earth's climate by observing their local environment and identifying a climate problem that they can um, go on to investigate. They can use Earth observation data from satellites or take measurements on the ground and based on their investigation, um, the team will then need to propose a way to help monitor or reduce the problem. There are three phases um, to the challenge. One is to identify a climate problem, two is to investigate it and three is to share the team's results and make a difference. And a key phases during um, during these these three phases, at key points during these three phases, um, the teams will have the chance to speak to um, scientists and experts in the field of Earth observation and climate for support and advice about their project. There is a STEM detect, um, sorry, there is a climate detectives website where you can find more guidance about the challenge. Um, there's also some Tutorials on there on how to use the Earth Observation Browser to find satellite images of your local area. Um, and there's past examples of student investigations that you could use for inspiration. Usually there is a prize for the best projects of a tour of Ezrin, which is ESA's Centre for Earth Observation in Italy. But obviously due to COVID, um, this hasn't been possible recently. Um, but hopefully in the year, um, the year to come, things will be back to normal. Um, um, in the UK, we are introducing a new version of Climate Detectives um, called uh, Climate Detectives UK at the moment, but this name may change. This is going to be a shorter version of the current Climate Detec Detectives Challenge and it's aimed at students 11 to 14, whereas if I just go back, um, Normal climate detectives is aimed at ages 8 to 15, so we've reduced the age range a little bit. For this version, um, teams will be already will be provided with um, bespoke sets of data rather than being asked to find their own through the Earth observation um, tools or anything like that. These data sets will cover a set range of, da of um, different data sets and these will allow them to research one um, of several research areas. Um, this version of the challenge is going to be shorter and have a more focused timeline than the original. So hopefully it'll be uh, easy, easier to implement in the in the classroom. We'll also be pairing te teams up with STEM ambassadors um, as mentors throughout the challenge, just like the other climate detectives, the, the main challenge. Um, and they'll be, again be able to help the teams and advise them with their investigations. So um, a timeline for Climate Detectives UK. Um, we should be opening um, Climate Detectives UK for registrations at the start of October. And during this month, we will pair teams up with their STEM ambassador mentors. The investigations will then take place between October and November um, with final reports being submitted to us in December. So that's it from me. That is a, a brief overview of the five ESA education challenges and competitions that we are encouraging schools to take part in each year. If you want a bit more information, please take a look at our enrichment page on the Ezra UK um, website um, or use one of the, the links that I've put on each challenge as many of them have their own separate websites as well. Um, if you want any further information or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop us an email. Our email address is ezero-uk 
at stem.org.uk, stem.org.uk, sorry. Um, and also please do give us a follow on Facebook or Twitter as we try our best to post about everything that's going on um, with these challenges and competitions and with ESRO, the wider ESRO UK work. Um, so it's a really good way of keeping up to date. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening um, and hope you enjoy the rest of STEMfest in space.